Hi, welcome back to my channel, Manga Hoarder. My name is Laura, and today we are hauling some books or hoarding some manga. Um, so I have a big haul of manga here to show you. Mostly Viz titles because Chapters was having a sale online, and so I indulged and bought some manga. Um, I indulge a lot on manga, it's sort of not an unusual thing. Um, but I decided that I was going to pick up some titles, catch up to series. Um, so this is sort of, I think, some different titles for me. Um, there isn't too much that is sort of new for me, but it is mostly about catching up um, and filling in some holes before things go out of print, or because things have started to go out of print and there's only a couple volumes left. Um, so. I have realized that I've missed out on a few things, so I am just going to show you what I've ended up picking up. Not everything is from Viz. I have had some other things that just sort of been trickling in from various little places, um, and I am going to go through those ones first, let you see those, and then we'll go through all of the, the big Viz haul after. So first off, I ended up completing uh, Stupid Guy Goes to India. This one is Stupid Guy Goes Back to India by Yukichi Yamamatsu. Uh, this was published by uh, Blaft, which is an Indian publisher. Um, and this is a silly story about a man, a uh, Japanese man, who really wants to start the manga market in India. And so without knowing anything about the industry um, and uh, about India even at all, he ends up sort of setting off to see if he can accomplish that. At least that's the first volume. I haven't read this one. As you can tell, it's still in plastic. Um, but this does complete the series. There's the two volumes in the series as far as I know. Um, it is an adult comic. There is definitely some adult things that are happening in it. Um, you know, he does talk about his bowels a lot. He does visit a prostitute. So, like, there are some adult things that are going on, but mostly this is an interesting title that just really is looking at um, culture shock or cultural differences and how people relate differently. I think that was sort of the interesting thing about it. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to have this. It was looks like it's out of print. It wasn't easy to collect. I did have to pay full price for it, which I'm not always happy about, um, but I am happy to have this because I had a feeling that once it's gone, it's gone. This is one of those titles. It's a small publisher, um, far overseas for me, and uh, I really wanted to have my hands on it. So I'm uh, looking forward to this and glad it's in the collection. Uh, so the next title, also still in plastic, um, from an indie pub. This is a new publication, That Miyoko Asagaya Feeling by Shinichi Abe. Um, this one was published by Black Hook Press, um, which I th think is that the one that's actually in Japan. Um, they are an indie publisher. Uh, they publish mostly uh, like Gekiga or 70s comics, uh, serious titles. This one is apparently a collection of short stories about the artist's struggles with romance, art, alcohol, and mental illness published in the early and mid 70s. Um, so I am looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a nice publication. Um, I've had really nice publications from Black Hook Press before. Um, and this one is translated by Ryan Holmberg, who always does a really nice job translating as well as usually includes uh, an essay or some sort of a research project in the works, which is really what I'm more interested in in some cases. Um, but I really do like collecting these types of work. So uh, will get read eventually, as I say to every other title that I add to my collection. It'll get read eventually. I just feel bad. I feel more bad about not reading something like this than I do about something that's really popular. So um, I might not take this out of plastic until I read it, just because I feel like if I take it out of plastic that I've waited too long. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's what I'm feeling. Um, and then these are not manga, but speaking of Ryan Holmberg, I did end up picking up um, a couple issues of the Bubbles I fanzine. Um, and this one in particular has an interview with Ryan Holmberg on it. Um, it's usually just sort of interviews from uh, various different uh, creators, people in the industry, um, things about comics, uh, little comic-y stuff. It is definitely just sort of a, a homemade fanzine, really kind of a nostalgic kind of publication. I think there's four out now. Um, I haven't gotten to read these either. I have, I'm not reading anything. Um, I'm also dropping it on the floor. But, again, something that I feel like I need 
and I will enjoy when I've read it. I actually have read little bits of it. I haven't read it completely, and I will. One day. I'm not confident if I've showed these already, but they're on my table of things to show, so maybe I haven't. Um, so I did end up finishing up Buying After the Rain by June Miyazuki, Volume 5. I've only read the first two, or possibly three. I did really enjoy the series. What I've read so far, I've heard that it ends really well. Um, kind of a slice of life. Starts out, I think, as sort of an age gappy type of romance, but it isn't really. Um, I think that maybe is a mislabel, a misnomer. Um, I think it's more about just sort of uh, character development, uh, particularly about this young woman on the cover. Um, so I am interested in reading this. I heard it's great. I've loved what I've read so far. Um, and I think it's done now, so I can read it, which is great too. Um, and I think I have showed this one, but I also got uh, Blade of the Immortal Volume 8. Um, I think in my previous video I had mentioned that this was damaged, and I wasn't going to return it, but then I was like, you know what? I don't know why I have to accept a damaged comic from Amazon, no less, when they're such a huge company. I'm just going to send it back, get a replacement. This one isn't isn't great, but it's much better than that previous one, so um, yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'm kind of at that point where Amazon is such a bad shipper, they're so bad at shipping, and I've been replacing so many things that I'm getting from them, that if I can buy it off of, uh, Chapters, who ships, like, infinitely better, and it's a dollar more, I'm gonna buy it on Chapters, because it's just such a hassle to buy on Amazon, so, um, kind of switching my allegiance, unless, of course, it's really cheap, because there is that return policy, but, um, it's just, it's so annoying. Uh, speaking of titles that you have to return, uh, I got another copy of Skyhawk by Jiro Taniguchi. This is my second copy that's sent to me. Um, was sent in a really flimsy bubble mailer, and it's one of those really heavy-duty, um, really nice publications. The first copy that got sent to me, like the, the whole bottom of the, the spine was just completely jacked up, so um, now it's okay. I haven't heard the greatest things about Skyhawk, um, but I am uh, collecting anything Jiro Taniguchi. If his name's on it, I'll buy it. Um, and the same goes for Fanfare. So the two names together is really enough for me. Fanfare, Planet Mon. I really love their publications. I think I'm just missing one of them. That's manga. Um, and yeah, I just like the way that they publish. I think they do a really beautiful job. Um, obviously this has some uh, indigenous, like kind of North American First Nations themes to it. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I have read um, one of Jared Toniguchi's other titles is set in sort of Alaska and stuff, so he does set some of his stories in North America, which is kind of interesting. Um, so this will be interesting, different. Um, I think stories about indigenous people is a little bit touchy, to say the least. So <laughs> it's always kind of scary territory to be jumping in and reading stories like this, but yeah. Anyway, I, I really do love Jiro Taniguchi. I will continue to buy anything Jiro Taniguchi, you know, for a while at least. And then the other one that I picked up, her last thing that's not Viz, as far as I can tell from the stack, that's not Viz that I picked up is uh, new. Uh, Panorama, or A Strange Tale of Panorama Island by Suihiro Maruo. This is the same title as um, Mr. Arashi's Amazing Freak Show. I believe it is also an eroguro, uh, like erotic grotesque story. I'm not entirely sure, but there's certainly... Um, there certainly is sort of an absurd horror uh, going on in it. Um, this is uh, published by Last Gasp. It was out of print for a little while. Apparently they've done a reprint so you can actually still order it or you can now order it off of their website. So if you're interested I will leave a link down below. I didn't know that this was getting a reprint. I've been looking for this for a while. I've been looking for this recently and thinking this is way too expensive. I'm never gonna get to collect this. And then I saw someone up on Twitter talking about how they just got their copy and I immediately went and ordered it, like, probably ten minutes later, I had already paid for it. So, 
Yes, I am very excited about this. I do really like uh, Maruo. Uh, he's kind of a scary creator. I'm a little bit scared to read this, but I also just really love absurdist horror and it just works very, very well for me. So I'm really kind of looking forward to this one. So going forward, I think the rest are all Viz, and hopefully I'm not wrong. But I believe the only thing that I've actually read for this entire stack, or this entire haul as it happens, is An Incurable Case of Love by Maki and Joji. You've already heard me say that I like this title. I like it. If you're interested in more of my thoughts, you can go and watch the video. If you're not, I encourage you to read it if you like Jose manga, Jose romance manga. It's a lot of fun. Since uh, since I posted all of those videos of our collection, there were a couple of kind of glaring gaps, and so I did end up actually go online looking for specific things uh, just to sort of fill in some gaps. Um, I do have a haul of Japanese language manga, which I'll be showing you later, which is also inspired from that, that collection. Uh, basically, my own collection inspired me to collect manga, which is not the best, and I'm sorry if it also inspired you to collect manga, because as much as I think you should collect manga, and manga is great, I also don't want to put anyone into debt, including myself. Um, but yeah. I did fill in some gaps. Uh, the first one that I filled in was Detroit Metal City. This is by Kiminori Wakasugi um, and it is published by Viz in their signature imprint. It should be on its way out, should be nearly out of print, um, but I only needed volume 5, volume 7, and volume 10. As you can see it's still in plastic, it's very shiny. Um, so I only needed these three volumes. I have completed it now. I have not read any of the series. It is new to our collection, I think, since the summer, so I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Um, I believe that this is a story about a Swedish rock group, possibly. Swedish pop music. Um, I think it's just supposed to be absurd as well, kind of just absurd horror, but I don't really know. Yeah, there's explicit content warning on the cover. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know anything really about it except for that it is one of the titles mentioned that 1001 comics you must read before you die. It is a Viz signature title and the cover has me intrigued at least because this is the kind of, or at least it indicates a type of horror that I think I would have fun reading. I don't know if this is horror or comedy or just absurd, but um, all of those things are my favorite things. So we will enjoy it anyways. Next volume of Kaze Hikaru is out by Taiko Watanabe. This is a Jose manga that uh, takes place during the Bakumatsu period um, and I think that the, the main characters are in the Shinsengumi so if you are familiar at all with uh, some of the history of Japan, Meiji Restoration, all of that good stuff, Shinsengumi are a very famous sort of army that uh, takes part in all of that um, and they famously wear these uh, blue clothing. Um, so you will see them in other types of series. Um, I haven't read a lot of this. I probably have read up until about volume 10, 15, um, but this has been releasing so slowly. I don't even know if it's getting two prints a year, but is releasing so incredibly slowly. This was in the very first Shoujo Beat magazine, which has since, of course, it, it continues and I believe it has at least another 10 more volumes or more that are supposed to come out so we're gonna all be very old I particularly will be a senior citizen by the time that this is done publishing I'm gonna keep buying it and maybe I might try reading it before it's actually done publishing which will be different for me I am kind of caught up or I filled the one gap that I was missing of Deep Grey Man volume 10 um, this is by Katsura Hoshino um, and I don't know what this is about. I don't think I've read any of this. I think I only watched some of the anime when I was in Japan, like it was on TV, and you know, it's been a while. <laughs> Maybe I should read it. <laughs> yeah, but I was missing volume 10. I'm caught up with the series, but I was missing volume 10. Um, this one also is releasing very slowly, but it is still being written as far as I know. I bought some more in a series I haven't been reading, but it is on my TBR for this month, even though there's only about a week left of the month. 
I might get to it. That's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure by Hirohiko Araki. Um, so these are the Diamond is Unbreakable. Yes, Diamond is Unbreakable, or Part 4. Um, so I did end up getting Volume 1. You can see the cover there. As well as Volume 2. Um, yeah, these are nice publications. They feel a little bit thicker than some of the other ones. Um, and I really do like the design on this one in comparison to the others. Like, I like, I just like this publication of this particular series. I think Viz is really putting out some nice hardcovers, but uh, this one in particular doesn't really look like it belongs as part of the rest of the series. But a sure good looking manga. Um, hopefully, it is a good read. I caught up to a shoujo manga, which is still publishing, but should be done, I think, this year or early next year. I think there's not too many volumes left. I don't think it's done yet. Um, I've only read the first volume. My sister has been reading it, though, and told me that I must keep buying it, um, which is mostly why I picked up volumes this time. So this is Takane and Hana. It is by Yuki Shiwasu. Uh, there you go. That is volume 8. I also picked up volume 9, volume 10, which I do like the aesthetic, at least on the back. That's nice. And then volume 11. I think this is sort of a comedy romance with a lot of shenanigans. That was sort of my impression of the first volume. Um, obviously it was good enough that I would keep buying it. Um, and like I say constantly, I'll read it eventually. Probably. That's why I'm called manga hoarder and not manga reader. And then the next, uh, the next series, I did buy quite a few. I don't know if there's still more coming. I think there is, but um, I wasn't able to buy everything because a lot of it has started to go out of print. And so I think I'm just waiting for a couple of volumes that were like last copies, which I may end up getting emails for that say, we don't have these copies. So I might be a little bit, you know, hooped. Uh, with those volumes, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I still ended up buying Arata the Legend. This is by Yuatase. This is their shonen manga. Um, I think this is sort of about um, almost isekai, like, but I think two boys end up transposed into each other's worlds. I think that's kind of what it is. I think that's what's going on. Um, it's been a long time since I read it. I wasn't a big fan of it. We only had the first three volumes. Um, but when I realized that this is now not available, I just keep putting it off because it wasn't my favorite, but I'm going to collect Watase because I love Yuatase. Um, so I end up just picking up what was available since the sale. So that's volume six. Um, I also got volume seven. All of them are published in this weird uh, horizontal layout. Uh, then volume nine, volume... 11 and then volume 14 so there's a big gap there and then the next one is 23 I'm pretty sure there's a couple more volumes uh, on their way because I don't remember there being quite that big of a gap when I ordered the next title I ended up finishing buying which is great but again it's sort of a title that I don't necessarily feel like I need to read right away um, I've read some of it it's okay it's not my favorite but because Arata went out of print uh, kind of scared me, so I don't want to miss out on titles, particularly if I'm already collected most of it. Um, so that is Behind the Scenes. This is by Bisco Hattori, the same author as Oren High School Host Club. I have read the first, like, three or four volumes of the series. It's okay. It's not my favorite, um, but it does end on volume seven, so the previous was six. Um, it's about a boy who ends up joining, I think, the, like, sort of the drama club or, like, the set design club that design sets for the drama club. I think that's what's going on. It's just about like their shenanigans. Um, next up, I bought the next volume of Queen's Quality. This is by Kyosuke Motomi. I really do like the series. I haven't read very far into Queen's Quality, but I did read QQ Sweeper, the prequel, and I think it of course gets better in Queen's Quality. Um, some sort of change in direction um, really works for this series, and I like uh, Kyosuke Motomi's titles, I think they're great. Uh, Dengeki Daisy's probably her most famous. Um, but this one, again, looked like there was sort of low stock for a lot of the titles, so I'm just trying to make sure I stay on top of this one, is really all it is, because I definitely don't want to miss out on it. 
Um, I have also caught up on the latest volume of Requiem of the Rose King. This is by Ayakano. Uh, this is a great title. Again, I haven't read very far, maybe about two or three volumes. Um, and so I'm quite far behind now, but uh, this is sort of a reimagining of the War of the Roses as sort of taken from some some of Shakespeare's early drafts, I think, is what I was reading, of uh, Richard III and that other one. I can't remember. I can't remember. I should just like prepare before I make videos, but I noticed I didn't have a video to go up this week, so we're making a video. So I got this. It's great. Ayakano's art is beautiful. Uh, storytelling is compelling. It's surprisingly dark. It is not what you expect from a shoujo manga. Or it's certainly not that standard high school fluffy, high school best friend turns into lover's story that you get in 90% of what's published here. So highly, 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 highly recommend you go read this. Next up. Um... Hmm. The other two, actually, that I got to show you are not titles from this sale, but also Viz and also from Chapters. I just bought them a few days before. Um, so I did end up picking up Beastars Volume 1. This is by Paru Itagaki. Um, I think Volume 2 is out. I've been hearing great things. I haven't read this volume yet, but I think it's about uh, high school students who happen to be animals, and I think they have animalistic nature. Possibly they're part of a drama club or something. I'm not entirely sure but people were saying it was good, so I picked it up. Um, and then also I have Volume 2 of Daytime Shooting Star by Mika Yamamori. Um, again, I haven't read Volume 1 yet. You know the pattern. If you come to my channel, I don't know anything about the books that I'm talking about. Except for my last title. Uh, this is the Dissolve... or Drifting Classroom. It's not Dissolving. Drifting Classroom by Kazuo Umez in Viz's new beautiful, 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 beautiful hardcover publication. I think there's only supposed to be about five volumes in this series and it's in a like a very smooth matte finish. It's got really clever beautiful topography with these other dimensions happening. That was really cute. I like that a lot. It's got imagery from the manga on the cover so gorgeous and it's supposed to have a new translation so I'm going to read this alongside uh, the other edition because of course I have it. Um, I love Kazuo Meizu, I love classic horror. We don't have nearly enough published in English but Kazuo Meizu or Umezu, wonderful. One of my absolute favorite darlings and this is such a nice publication. I love the size of it. I was a little worried it was going to be too big but it's just like just such a nice size, so comfy and chunky and kind of just perfect. So yeah, this is going to be really, really beautiful. I'm happy. So that's everything that I got from this haul of manga from Mostly Chapters. Um, let me know if you've been picking anything up, particularly if you've picked up any of these titles. Especially if you've picked up Drifting Classroom, let me know your thoughts on the title. Um, if you've had a chance to read it yet, that'd be amazing. Let me know down below. Um, I think that's it for me today. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.